welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there AstroVentures, welcome back. If you're new to this Astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the Astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skygetter Pro or the Star Adventure. Well, it's new moon weekend and I am really excited because here in my home state of Utah, I have the uh, expected usual uh, crystal clear desert nights and for the first time in a long time, California is not sending any smoke my way, so it's going to be a great weekend. So let me uh, throw some suggestions out there for those of you that are looking for some targets. So first off, let's get started here. We're going to take a look at Cygnus the Swan. And in my local area here in northern Utah, through timeanddate.com, that's where you can find the information for when you are actually truly dark. Uh, dark for me will be at 8.48 in the evening so just about nine o'clock so i went ahead and set the uh, stellarium here to 9 27 and uh, we'll take a look starting out in the evening cygnus the swan is directly over top of you and let's zoom in here now looking at cygnus you have a lot of targets that are available these are emission nebula and yes they're in the hydrogen alpha and they're the reds however the emissions coming off of these particularly the North American Nebula over here uh, are very strong. And so even if you are not shooting with an Astromotic camera, it will not be a problem to pick up anything here in the North American Nebula. So this will definitely be a great beginner target. It's large. And uh, right next door to it, you have over here around the Seder star, you have a whole lot more nebulosity and it extends out further. If you wanted to capture all of this, which I'm really thinking about doing myself because I'm usually zoomed in more, but you can actually capture all of this area with a 50 millimeter. And uh, you know that could, that could give you a really beautiful hydrogen alpha loaded image. So consider that uh, NGC Nebula, uh, excuse me, North American Nebula, NGC 7000, and then uh, right next door here around the star Seder. You have the uh, all this nebulosity here, and I'm sorry, but it escapes me as far as uh, the, the name of this at the moment, but I wanted to get this out quickly. So anyway, those are there. And then uh, going from there, right next door off of the wing of Cygnus, you have the Veil Nebula. And this is a great target. Uh, you do really kind of want to have the uh, the darker skies. This uh, beautiful nebulosity that is here from a long since dead and exploded star. There's some blues in here and there's reds in here, but uh, this one definitely favors uh, being in darker sky area. The an astromotic camera will help with the reds, but again, this isn't really needed. But good dark clean skies is is really the advantage that you're after and with this particular one you can uh shoot this one at 150 millimeters uh you can go longer if you'd like depending on how much you want to get but at 150 millimeters you're gonna get all of this here so there you go now uh the only problem that you will run into and you can start shooting this immediately at the beginning of the night but we're gonna back out a little bit here and watching the time, so I've got 2127 here. So we're at 927. So here we go 1030, 1130. Let's swing this around so we can see because the horizon's going to be coming towards us. Okay, and here we are at after midnight. And you can see we're working towards the horizon. There's 130. And then looking at it here, we're going to be, well, there's 30 degrees above, and here is 35, there is 40. You could probably push this till 2 a.m. So with that, I mean, you could pull a, a solid five hours on this target. 
And, uh, you know, so this is a great one to go after. And if you didn't want to pull an all-nighter, you know, you can do 9 to 2 a.m. and then pack it up and call it a night and still walk out of there with uh, five hours of data. So next, let's take a look here. And uh, the heart and soul, I see 1805. And this is next door, okay, right next door to Cassiopeia. And so let me zoom this out a little bit here. You can see there's Cassiopeia, there's Cepheus over here, okay? So let's bring this up, and here we go. The Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula. Now, I'm suggesting these. If you want to, you could start out at 200 millimeters, and you could capture uh, both of these really well. And depending on what you want to do, you could always zoom in further depending on what you want to do. But 200 will capture both of these together. And another great thing about these two targets is they are both, although they are your hydrogen alpha, you know, that favors towards a astro-modified camera, the fact is, is both of these emission nebula are also strong enough that even with a stock camera, you're not going to have any problem with uh, picking these up. And then the other thing is, is that this target, and so you can see here, I'm at 1.30, okay, in the morning, and we're going to continue on. There's 2.30, 3.30. You'll notice it's sitting up here high in the sky. Whoops. It's sitting up high in the sky. Okay, there we go. Sorry. It got a little goofy there. So here we go. Let me jump back on Heart Nebula. You can see it's sitting up high in the sky, and it stays up there all night. So this is one, you know... Depending on where you're at and depending on the, um, you know, when you decide to get yourself going, you can get some serious amount of time. Now, for myself here in Utah, I'm looking at an 848 dark, so let's call it 9 o'clock, and then the first light comes at 548, so let's call that 6. You could pull 9 hours easily on the Heart and Soul Nebula and, and really load up that data. So that's a great target to go after. Consider that the heart and soul. And then, like I said, it stays up there all night long for you. Okay, let me back this up here. Let's see. Okay, we're going to get this back to 930 there. All right, uh, next I want to suggest, if you're looking for a smaller target, less often uh, imaged, then what I want to suggest to you is IC1590. And that's the Pac-Man Nebula. And here we go. Now, it's right off of Cassiopeia, and it is a smaller target. My suggestion, on this particular one, you want to go with 500 millimeter. You're going to need that, that longer focal length. And, you know, this one is one that's going to lean more towards favoring your uh, cameras that are astro-modded. Uh, and it is a smaller target, so you're going to need that longer focal length. And with that, you're going to need some good tracking during the night, you know, from your, um, you know, your, uh, oh gosh, let me think here, uh, your sky guider. Uh, you're you're going to need some really good guiding on this or, or tracking, I apologize, tracking on this. And so that's another target for you. And then lastly, a personal one that I have been going after is let's see here uh ngc 7822 i think i'm up to 16 hours on this one and this is the cosmic question mark i've heard uh, monkey head and skull nebula i think those are some other ones but uh this is a more faint one and it does favor more towards the astro modified and so you know I'm hoping this all turns out well because right now I have 16 hours of data invested in this and I'm thinking about going after it again. But this is another target that's going to be out well early in the evening, easily findable off of Cepheus, the house there. And then just to show you, I'm backing out here. Okay, here's the north, northeast sky. You can see it starting up here. And uh, let's see, what azimuth are we on? 50 degrees up. And then going through the night as we go on, 22.30, you can see it's climbing higher. 23.30, it's climbing higher. So again, this is going to be another one of those targets where now it's come up, now it's coming around. We're at 2.30 in the morning, it's coming down. 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 
4.30 and I am back to 50 degrees above. There's 5.30 and that gets me, let's see here, I have to move this out of the way. Let's see here, uh, that's getting me about 45 degrees up. So, you know, six o'clock, I'll be down to 40 degrees. It's still all in good shooting conditions. So if you decided you want to go after this one, this is one that you could pull nine hours on. And I think I'm absolutely going to do that so I can add nine more hours to the 16 that I've already uh, recorded. Now, um, <clears throat> those are the targets that I'm suggesting. Now, here's what I'm going to um, also take a look at going after is I want to get, let's see here, need to move this. Right now, the comet is at perihelion, okay? And you can see, and let me turn the atmosphere back on. Okay, there's the sun, okay? And there's 630. And at this point here, it's three degrees, almost four degrees above the horizon. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. I don't think existing here in the uh, the Rocky Mountains that I can get a line of sight to this. But I'm going to give it a go and see if I can't pull this off and capture it. Uh, again, as I had uh, said in the video on this comet, I really don't think I have a chance until uh, you know mid-October. But I just want to throw it out there. I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. See if I can't capture it. I have seen some beautiful images from uh, along the equator area and uh, in the uh, the southern hemisphere. Uh, you know, it's their time right now. Not quite ours. So, but I'm going to give it a go. So there you have it. Uh, what I would like to say is, if you uh, do capture anything and uh, you know you want to share it, I'd love to see you join us over at our Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR. And, uh, you know, my name, my name is George, and you'll find me on there along with uh, Sasquatch Mike and a lot of other great people. So we'd love to see what it is that you shot and, you know, tell the tale of, you know, how your evening went. So I hope it all goes really well. So uh, additionally, if you like what you're uh, seeing here at Astro Venture, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell, and sharing the videos out so we can help grow the channel. So until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.